so what are the variables for testing like this? What do we need? How can we do it? Is it as easy as we just, you know, hook a clamp on? Well, no. So, if you're not familiar, and I am not super familiar with Pico's NVH setup, I don't own one, but they measure on X, Y, and Z axis. So if we all remember how much we hated math, if we're graphing something, we have our X axis, we have our Y axis, and then we would have our Z. So, Y, up and down, X, left to right, Z, front to back, fore and aft, however you want to put it. They measure in three directions. Well, that's good, but the problem with hooking up just a standard accelerometer to a hose is, and we're going to do some fine art here. So this is our hydraulic pump, and this is our outlet. So if we hook our little pressure transducer up to there, well, we're going to be measuring X and Y. So X, Y, as well as Z. But are we measuring fluid? Yes, but we're measuring not only the effect of fluid on that pipe, line, hose, whatever it may be fitting, but we also have to factor in the fact that our pump is going to be moving all sorts of directions because it's engine mounted. Generally, they don't have their own uh, engine style mounts, rubber bushing mounts or anything. They just sit there and they bounce around. So now we're putting in additional noise into our system that we really don't care about. But, as we already stated, when fluid is in a system, it actuates outward equally on all surfaces at 90 degree angles, if we want to get real fancy. So, just like the clamp on meter that we proved with the diesel injection system, just like that, what if we take that same accelerometer setup, but we make it a band? So now, it's reading the pulsation. Oh, easy now. Let's change color a little bit here. So now, it's reading the pulsations around the entire circumference of the hose. So it's basically canceling out any up and down, left to right movement caused by the machine itself, by vibrations, by bouncing around off-road, uh, natural harmonic frequencies that occur in the machine. And now it's strictly allowing the natural operation and natural dynamics of that hydraulic system to pulse in and pulse out, pick it up, and give us usable waveforms. Now, they may be in the see if we can do this. Form like this we saw where we had actually, it would have come up something like this, where during initial injection opening, say, or a fluid flow, a, uh, a control valve opening, a relief valve opening, we see a, a spike, just like this, and then we have turbulence in the fluid system, but as either our relief valve, as pressure drops down because the relief valve is relieving it, or pressure drops, or we stop actuating the control, it starts to drop down, our amplitude drops. Now by monitoring amplitude, which is our up and down, as well as our duration, we can tell a lot about, uh, be it a injection nozzle, uh, be it a control valve, be it a cylinder, we can determine, say it is a consistent, say we're monitoring a hydraulic cylinder. So a hydraulic ram, like uh, Eric O just did there on his Kubota, perfect example, double acting cylinder, steering cylinder. So we got our little piston duker in here, we got a rod going this way, a rod going this way, and we got fluid here and fluid here. Alright? So if you guys didn't watch the video, 
say we got fluid coming in here. Well, as that fluid's applied to the piston, it's going to push the piston this direction, right? So it's going to extend here and retract here, and then vice versa. But, like Eric said, all of a sudden, you got some leakage in your seal. Well, now this fluid's going to come through and it's going to start going to the other side, you're going to stall your cylinder. You're going to lose steering, it's going to be all wonky, it might go back and forth, back and forth. Well, as that fluid is flowing, remember, anytime fluid flows, turbulence is created. Well, we should be able to see some type of waveform. And let's do that a little better. Some type of waveform that would be, you know, maybe a real tight, steady amplitude showing that fluid is consistently flowing across. Now, placement of your transducer or your uh, accelerometer would be important in this case because you would have to be in the right spot to pick it up and know where the piston is and all. Not a, not a big deal. That would be one use. Another would be at your control valve. So you've got your little... Uh, do, we've got our little lever here, so we got a forward and a reverse, and we've got one line going there, one line going there, big old hydraulic cylinder. Alright, so when we go forward, what we actually have and, um, is a little neutral block in the center where depending on the system design there should be no flow there or open or closed center, that, that's a whole different ball game right now. But neutral, so no fluid flow to either actuator. So if we were to put our pickup on either side with our little lead, we would expect to see no movement or no vibration of fluid within that section because it should be neutral down. Now when we go to crack, crack it either in the forward or the reverse direction, then what? Well, we want to see some type of fluid movement in either direction. Now, if we see a real rapid <coughs> change in fluid, we have a good indication that the, the ceiling lands, you know, the, the, on the spool valve, the ceiling sections, may be warm. Your, uh, your, your return spring may be bad, something like that. Now if we see real slow, we might know we have a supply issue into the center of the stack or something along those lines. I mean, there's, there's countless directions you could go with this and it, it's really quite interesting that based off normal system operation, normal characteristics of a hydraulic system, of any system that is pumping fuel, I mean, it, essentially any system that pumps or moves because Air systems, aren't we doing the same thing with in-cylinder pressure transducer testing? We're looking at the, the fluctuations, your exhaust waveforms, your compression, everything, and analyzing them, and this is, this is doing the same thing both internally as well as using the natural vibrations created to be able to diagnose based off of logic, system operation, and understanding of the particular machine's hydraulic setup and what it should and shouldn't be doing, I think there's a lot of potential here. So, testing is going on, we're experimenting with some stuff, and I'm excited about it, and hopefully this makes sense. I know this is a not good format, but just wanted to get it out there. It was a little easier for me to try to do it this way than right, and hopefully you guys could follow along. So, let me know what you think. Thank you.